Something just brushed past your leg. Something slimy. Slithery. Something really, really big. A giant squid has decided you're its next meal. How did a giant squid get the drop on you? Are you going to be next on the dinner menu? And how can your measly two arms take on eight? This is what if, and here's what would happen if you were attacked by a giant squid. Giant squids are one of the ocean's most enduring mysteries. They live in the deepest waters of the ocean and are rarely seen by humans. In fact, most of the stuff we do know about them is from dead carcasses that wash onto shore. Like its smaller relatives, the giant squid has two eyes, a beak, eight arms, two feeding tentacles, and a siphon. All stuff you don't want swimming up against you. Giant squids mostly eat deep water fishes and other squids, including going full on Hannibal Lecter and eating their own kind. And they do not mess around. In fact, they're known to attack entire schools of fish from below. Once they grab a meal with the suckers on their feeding tentacles, they drag the prey down to their sharp beak. This cuts the prey into more manageable pieces. And as if you weren't already too scared to ever go swimming again, they start doing even more damage. The giant squid then uses its radula, which is like a tongue covered with teeth. This slices and dices the prey up into even tinier bite-sized pieces. Dinner is served. Maybe you should get out of the water. Like right now. If you're unlucky enough to be hunted by a giant squid, I've got some bad news for you. The giant squid's sheer size, strength, speed, and hunting abilities would make it extremely difficult to escape. The first stealthy move it would make is attacking you from below. Ooh, horrifying, right? Well, it gets worse. The giant squid probably isn't going to devour you right then and there. It's going to drag you into deep water where it feels safe from its own predators. Because it's so fast, you would definitely struggle with the changing pressure and your eardrums would certainly burst. This speedy whiplash may also break some of your bones from the giant squid holding you so tight. If you're somehow not dead by being gripped and scraped by the feeding tentacles, the giant squid would use all of its arms to bring you to its beak. If you're at this stage, the hope of escape is pretty non-existent. The giant squid is using all of its strength to pull you in for dinner. And I know it's a bad time to say this, but it won't be a quick death. You see, giant squids have a bit of a gag reflex problem, so they're going to eat you nice and slow. This is it. You close your eyes and prepare to be squid food. Wait, what's that sound? Ah yeah, your buddy, the sperm whale, has come to the rescue. Now, giant squids don't have much in the way of predators, but sperm whales? Yeah, they stay away from those guys. Researchers have found giant squid beaks in the stomachs of sperm whales and battle wounds from giant suckers on their bodies. This means that your new best friend has a taste for supersized calamari. The giant squid isn't going down without a fight though and will go toe to toe with the sperm whale. Now, I know it would be super cool to watch, but I think you're forgetting something. You're still underwater. If by some miracle you make it back to land in one piece, you're going to have quite the story to tell. It's a shame no one will ever believe you. This is because giant squid sightings, let alone attacks, are so rare. We still have so much to learn about them. There could be millions of them lurking in the deep waters and we wouldn't even know. They're the largest snakes on Earth roaming the Amazon. They've eaten goats, 
deer, and even crocodiles. So what would happen if an anaconda tried to eat you? Can an anaconda really swallow a human? How long would you be traveling through the snake's body? And has something like this happened before? This is what if, and here's what would happen if you were swallowed by an anaconda. Believe it or not, in 2014, someone was actually dumb enough to attempt this. He was wearing a large, bulky suit covered in pig's blood. The anaconda worked for an hour, wrapping its mouth around the head of the suit, but it was ultimately unsuccessful in swallowing the human whole. If it had been successful, how would an anaconda be able to eat a full-sized adult? So, you happen to be wandering in the Amazon rainforest and you stumble upon one of these giant anacondas. Green anacondas grow up to 9 meters in length and can weigh as much as 225 kilograms. You might think you'd be a tasty meal to them as a small meal for an anaconda is about 18 kilograms. If they were to gobble you up, it would keep them satisfied for weeks. But a meal over 45 kilograms, like you, might not be what an anaconda is most interested in. Due to how massive you are, not to mention being taller and broader than most animals it eats, you would take too long to consume. This, in turn, would leave the anaconda vulnerable to predators for weeks, if not months, until it finishes digesting you. But let's say it did want to eat you. What would happen then? Well, before an anaconda swallows you, it would kill you first. An anaconda is a constrictor snake, and it kills by wrapping its body all around its prey and quickly crushing them to death with over 9,000 pounds of pressure. It would be a pretty quick end for you. But we all know that's not how this show works. So let's assume you survive this and we get to see the entire process. The anaconda would then widen its jaw to swallow you whole. You won't have to worry about it chewing you up into little bits since it only has fangs used for holding its prey. And luckily, as opposed to other snakes, the anaconda isn't venomous so its fangs won't poison and paralyze you. But something you will find in the anaconda's mouth is lots and lots of saliva. Yeah, this will be used to moisten you. You know, so it's easier for the anaconda to slide you down their gullet. Mm. So now you're moving down the snake's esophagus. As with many other animals, the muscles in the esophagus will push you down the snake's body. The anaconda also has the ability to move and bend its ribs to crush you even further and push you down into its stomach. Okay, now you're in the anaconda's stomach. Don't worry, we're still keeping you alive. You know, to make this more fun. The anaconda's stomach produces powerful acids and stomach enzymes that will dissolve your skin, and then eventually your bones. How fast do these acids work exactly? Well, an anaconda once dissolved an alligator's skin in just three days, so your squishy, fleshy skin would disappear pretty quickly. Your body would break down even further as you move through the snake's small intestine. That's due to the liver and pancreas secreting even stronger enzymes. Everything besides your hair and your nails would be digested at this point. And even if you were wearing some magical suit that protected you from the acid and everything else, it would still be a couple of weeks before you were unceremoniously pooped out. So it's likely you'd starve. Although something like this is incredibly unlikely. Just leave anacondas alone. After all, they aren't interested in eating you in most cases, as you're just too big. They're really just trying to defend themselves. Plus, you'd pretty much die instantly if you tried to mess with one of these things. A giant fork-tongued lizard with razor-sharp teeth. And a bite with bacteria-laced venom that's seeping into your flesh. Well, this is no legend, it's a Komodo dragon. What would happen if you were attacked by one of these giant lizards? What would be your best bet to fight it off? And if you escaped, how long before its venom would leave you in a pool of blood? 
This is What If. And here's what would happen if you were attacked by a Komodo dragon. Komodo dragons, also known as Komodo monitors, are the largest lizards in the world. As adults, they have an almost uniform stone color and can weigh around 70 kilograms. The largest Komodo dragon ever found weighed 166 kilograms and was more than 3 meters long. They're powerful, voracious eaters with a taste for all kinds of meat, from small rodents up to a large water buffalo. Their wide jaws and strong throat muscles allow them to devour huge chunks rapidly. And they can eat up to 80% of their own body weight in one meal. Sadly, they are an endangered species, with only 1,380 adult Komodo dragons left in the wild. They can be found in the Lesser Sunda Islands of Indonesia. Most fitting, the island of Komodo. Here, they live on beaches, ridgetops, and even tropical savanna forests, just waiting for the perfect chance to attack you. Arriving on the island of Komodo, you'd be excited and looking forward to some peaceful vacation time, but as you walk around the tropical forests, you'd be blissfully unaware that Komodo dragons could already be stalking you. Yeah, their hunting strategy is all about stealth and power. It comes down to their sense of smell when they're on the prowl for food, and they can pick up the trail of rotting flesh from up to four kilometers away. For the Komodo, it's not about taking a whiff of air with their nose. Instead, their peculiar method involves sticking out their long, forked tongue to sample the air. Then they roll it back in, touching it to the roof of their mouth. Here, the tongue rubs against a sensory organ that can detect different airborne molecules. A Komodo can then use these molecules as a guide for what direction to head toward. Or it can stay perfectly still for hours, just waiting for their prey. In this case, it's you. Luckily, you'd spot the yellow-tongued lizard before it attacks. Now would be a good time to run, but with a Komodo's running speed clocking in at up to 20 kilometers an hour, you wouldn't get very far. The dragon would bite down hard on your ankle. The pain would be immense, but you'd fight back. You'd punch its neck, trying to force it to let go of you. But no luck. Maybe you'd better try prying open its massive jaws with your own bare hands. You'd struggle and struggle, but it, it would work. Although it would come at a cost. Your hands would get sliced by the large, serrated teeth of the dragon. Now, you'd be bleeding profusely from the leg and hands. Time to get away and find help before the giant lizard has you for lunch. But a worse fate may now lay before you. All over the Komodo dragon's jagged teeth, there are bits of meat from its last meal. Those bits make the perfect breeding ground for dangerous strains of bacteria. And that bacteria would now be infecting your body. From your bite wounds, you could be exposed to 50 different varieties of bacteria. Some of these are highly septic, potentially leading to severe infection. But the worst still wouldn't be over. You would now have venom coursing through your body, too. This would lower your blood pressure and prevent your blood from clotting. You could only have a few minutes left before you bleed out. Even if you slow the bleeding, this would be a terrible way to go. You could start to get the chills and a fever. Your whole body would be in pain. Eventually, your heart and circulatory system would begin to fail entirely. Blood would no longer flow to any of your organs, causing them to fail. It's likely you wouldn't have the time to make it somewhere safe, and the Komodo dragon's hunt for you would resume. Remember how they can smell rotting meat from kilometers away? 
Well, your injuries would now attract every Komodo dragon around you. And while no Komodo dragon could swallow you whole on its own, a group of them would devour every scrap of your body. Yeah, that's right. They'd eat your bones and your intestines, possibly even swinging them around a bit to remove all the undigested contents. Oh, what a delicious meal. As scary and horrible as all this would be, you could rest a bit easier knowing that it's extremely rare. It happens, sure, but prior to a deadly Komodo dragon attack on a young child in 2007, there hadn't been a single fatal incident on Komodo Island in 33 years. Hippos are large, loud, and dangerous. They kill 500 people a year in Africa, and their attacks are vicious. So if you're around one, keep your guard up, and don't be fooled by its big, cute face. Well, look at this little fellow. That hippo might be hungry. But do hippos eat meat? What warning sign should you watch for? And could a hippo fit your whole body in its mouth? This is what if, and here's what would happen if you were swallowed by a hippo. These water-loving creatures can grow up to five meters long, and they weigh up to 4,500 kilograms. It takes a lot of energy to carry all that mass around, so these hungry hippos have to eat 35 kilograms of food every night. Luckily, they're herbivores, for the most part. There have been reports of hippos eating carrion, but they're rare. Humans are definitely not in their diet, but that doesn't mean you can relax around hippos. They're incredibly aggressive, and there's one warning sign that you should never ignore. If you see a hippo open its mouth in a yawn or a laugh, you're in trouble. This is a sign that it's going to attack. You think I'm gonna tell you to run? Sorry, but hippos can charge at up to 30 kilometers per hour. And sometimes there's no warning at all. Hippos will often glide underneath a small boat, flipping it and throwing its passengers into the water. Once you're in the water, your chances of surviving are slim. But could a hippo swallow you whole? While they are big animals, a hippo wouldn't be able to consume you in one bite. Instead, you'd feel intense pressure as the hippo begins to crush your arms or legs with its teeth. You punch the hippo right in the nose and it loosens its grip on your body. But although you manage to break free, you're in bad shape. There are huge holes in your side from its tusks. Parts of your body are unrecognizable and you're missing an arm. Yeah, that arm is still in the hippo's mouth. Now, while you're being rushed to the nearest hospital, what happens to your missing limb? Hippos have a unique digestive system. They have three stomach chambers and they use a method called foregut fermentation. Microbacteria living in hippos' stomachs break down food early in the digestion process. It's a symbiotic relationship that allows hippos to get the most nutrients out of tough grasses. So after your arm travels down the hippo's throat and goes into the first chamber of its stomach, microbacteria would begin to break down your arm. Then your arm would pass on to the true stomach. This is where digestive enzymes would continue to break it down. Later, the hippo would fling remnants of your arm and some grass over the beast's territory. Hippos can spread their feces up to 10 meters around them. This plays an important role in the rivers and lakes of Africa. By eating and excreting grass, 
Hippos add silicon into Africa's water systems. And that's good because unicellular algae need silicon to thrive. The algae produce oxygen and it's a key part of the food web. Hippos are extremely territorial and they're obsessive about protecting their young. So while baby hippos sure are cute, you should always steer clear of them. Most attacks happen because mother hippos see humans as a threat to their offspring. Beware! After many millions of years, the T-Rex is back. And this giant, scary predator is setting its hungry sights on you. What would running into this dinosaur be like? How could you possibly escape? And what would happen if it sunk its teeth into you? This is what if, and here's what would happen if you were attacked by a T-Rex. During the late Cretaceous period, about 66 million years ago, the T-Rex was one of the largest known meat-eating dinosaurs. Its full name, Tyrannosaurus rex, means king of the tyrant lizards. And it certainly fits the profile. These dinosaurs towered at up to six meters tall. With the strongest bite of any land animal that ever lived, the T-Rex was a ferocious predator. Back in its day, it was roaming the once lush and warm western parts of the United States. But somehow it's back, and it's on the hunt for you. Run! Your peaceful walk in the park would take a turn for the worse. You'd look up and suddenly see the frightening sight of a T-Rex rising above you. Frozen with fear, you'd quickly take in its terrifying features. Its powerful tail counterbalancing a massive skull, its thick neck muscles, and its muscular thighs that would be a good reminder that you shouldn't have skipped your leg day at the gym. Though I wouldn't advise it, you might involuntarily chuckle at the sight of the dinosaur's puny two-fingered forearms. But your amusement wouldn't last long. The T-Rex would flash its gigantic teeth at you. Some of those could be 30 centimeters long. As a fan of the Jurassic Park film franchise, you might think that the best thing to do is remain standing as still as possible. But research suggests that the T-Rex had a sense of vision as good or better than modern day eagles. Yeah, now would be a good time to run. Another thing Jurassic Park led you to believe is that in order to get away from this predator, you'd need to be able to move as fast as a car. Well, that would mean running at a speed of 50 kilometers per hour, and that's impossible for humans. Yeah, even the world's fastest person, Usain Bolt, with his top speed of 44 kilometers per hour, wouldn't make it out alive. But you'd still have a chance Today, scientists debate whether or not the T-Rex could run at all. Research supporting the theory that the dino could run estimates that this predator would be able to move at a moderate pace of about 25 to 40 kilometers per hour. Any faster, and it would break its legs. On the other hand, the T-Rex might not have been able to run at all. Instead, it would have walked at a slower than human pace of five kilometers per hour. That's about as fast as a soft shell turtle. Knowing this, you could jog a comfortable distance from the attacking T-Rex. And if you're not a runner, soon enough you'd stop to catch a breath, but that would be a mistake. Your moment of relaxation would suddenly be interrupted by extremely sharp pain. Yeah, another T-Rex has found you with its amazing sense of smell, and it would sink its teeth into you. With that sharp pain, you'd feel your bones being crushed. The T-Rex would be using its so-called puncture and pull strategy on you. The dinosaur would drag its teeth 
right through your flesh and bones. This would be a gruesome way to die. Its front teeth would grip and pull you to shreds while its side teeth tear your flesh from your body. Its back teeth would be moving your body closer and closer to the T-Rex's throat. Struggling to break free wouldn't help you now. Your attacker's wide teeth wouldn't break from your wiggling. After all, this dino used to hunt Triceratops. And to make things worse, the dinosaur's powerful neck muscles would thrash you around. These muscles would be strong enough to throw a 50-kilogram chunk of meat about five meters into the air. Hey, sorry to be so gruesome, but what did you think running into a prehistoric creature like this would be like? Something is lurking in the water. Do you see it? Close calls like this happen with whales more often than you might expect. And although the people in these videos got away relatively unscathed, there's no denying that they were just meters away from being a whale's lunch. But what would happen if they hadn't been so lucky? Could a human body survive being swallowed by a whale? Has it ever happened before? This is what if, and here's what would happen if you were swallowed by a whale. If you've never seen a whale up close, it's hard to comprehend just how monstrous they can really be. To put it in perspective, the blue whale is the largest animal on the planet. Its tongue alone weighs as much as an elephant and it can fit anywhere between 400 and 500 people in its mouth. But we wouldn't have to worry about one of these guys swallowing us anytime soon because their anatomy makes it nearly impossible. Instead, we should be more concerned with their smaller cousins, sperm whales. In 1891, reports emerged that a man had been swallowed by one of these whales. And although he lived to tell the tale, he would never be the same again. According to the story, James Bartley was swallowed when a whale attacked his ship, and he wasn't retrieved until the following day. When the crew found and killed the whale, they quickly brought it on board their ship and cut it open, revealing an unconscious but very alive James Bartley. His face and arms were bleached white, and he was blind, all thanks to the stomach acids of the whale. However, as the years went by, people started poking holes in this story and questioned whether James had really been swallowed by a whale. I mean, wouldn't the stomach acids do more damage than just bleaching his skin? Well, with the power of science, we took a closer look, and we quickly discovered that if you get swallowed by a whale, coming back out with shiny white skin would be the least of your worries. Okay, so the first thing you'd have to worry about once you were swallowed would be getting shredded to pieces by the sperm whale's impressive set of teeth. Each tooth is approximately 20 centimeters long. That's about the length of an average chef knife, and whales have anywhere from 40 to 50 of these. Let's say you're lucky enough to make it past all of them. Next, you'd begin your descent down the throat. Not only would it be dark and slimy down here, but you'd also find it hard to breathe due to the lack of oxygen and an increase in methane gas. As the whale's throat muscles constricted in and out to help force you down, you'd also start to feel hydrochloric acid beginning to eat away at your skin. I know what you're thinking. We just got into this whale and James Bartley's story already seems pretty fishy. Well, you're not wrong, but what would be the fun in stopping now? So next, you'd be dropped into the first and largest of the whale's four stomachs. You'd probably be in there for a while, but on the bright side, you might have some light in the form of a bioluminescent squid or two being noshed on after your arrival. Sperm whales love neon flying squid. You'd better enjoy this brief light show because after this, you'd just be tossed from one stomach to the next with the acids breaking down almost all of your body until you're just a bunch of bones being unceremoniously ejected from the whale's anus. 
So yeah, it's pretty safe to say that there's no way you could be swallowed whole by a whale and live to tell the tale. Sorry, James, you may have been able to fool people in the 1890s, but we're on to you now. As vast as they are and as monstrous as they might seem to us, whales actually have no interest in eating humans. And if they could talk, they would probably make a point of telling us that. Ah, it's a beautiful day for a hike in the woods. There's nothing but the fresh air, trees, and killer bears. Oh, oh my! What would it be like to meet up with a bear? In what ways would different kinds of bears attack? And what could you do to stay alive? This is What If, and here's what would happen if you were attacked by a bear. Close encounters with bears don't always lead to them attacking you. There are only about 40 bear attacks around the world every year, give or take. But if you do get attacked, you're in big trouble. And each type of bear could have a different dinner plan for you. You could run into a 58-kilogram female black bear or a 315-kilogram grizzly bear with her cubs. Or if you're in the Arctic, you might face a vicious 590-kilogram polar bear. Whoa! Staring up at the gaping jaws of any bear could be the last thing you see. Will your next move save your life? After a peaceful night of camping, you unzip your tent and find you've made a big mistake. You've left some food out and now you've been graced with the presence of a dangerous visitor. It's a black bear. You gasp and freeze in place, but don't worry yet. Black bears usually don't attack in a sudden encounter. Mostly, they attack in self-defense, so don't get too close. You slowly step out of the tent and scoot a few steps back to give the bear some space, but you're not far enough away. Now, the bear is showing aggression with some grunts. You could run, but then you'd have to leave all your stuff behind. Instead, you spot a nearby tree and think, I could climb that and be safe. Well, as you dash toward the tree, the bear is right behind you. Luckily, you were closest to the tree. With running speeds up to 40 kilometers an hour, black bears are fast. You scramble up a few branches and look down to see the bear climbing too. Yeah, black bears can climb, so now you'd be screwed. When it's close enough to attack, the black bear swipes its massive claws at you. A black bear's claws are good for climbing, but they aren't that sharp, so it's the bear's strength you'd worry about. Black bears can move boulders weighing 140 kilograms with one paw. And one swipe from this bear knocks you down to the ground. Ouch! Your surging adrenaline helps you spring up. While the bear is still in the tree, it's time to make a run for it. You'd sprint down the trail until you couldn't run anymore. You'd need to stop and catch your breath. But uh, what's that dreadful crunching sound? Turning around slowly, you freeze. Oh no, it's a grizzly bear with two cubs. The mama bear begins rubbing her body on a nearby tree. Is she just scratching an itch? Uh, not quite. She lets out a loud growl. You realize that you've surprised her, and she's being aggressive to protect her cubs. But you wouldn't have much time to react. This opportunistic hunter charges toward you at a blazing 64 kilometers per hour. You make a quick, evasive move, but the bear swings one of its claws at you. A grizzly's claws aren't razor sharp since 
the bear uses them to dig. But they are strong, and one hit knocks you down hard. The grizzly is on top of you, and its body weight keeps you pinned. Its massive jaws are about to clamp down on you. With a force of 8,274 kilopascals, you think you're done for, and uh, you might be right. The best thing you could do now is to play dead. It's a terrifying gamble, but it would be your best shot at surviving. The bear would sniff and slobber all over you, each movement of its paws digging deeper into your body. But it works. Mama Grizzly walks back over to her cubs, and you are completely motionless until you hear the bears crawling off into the distance. Phew, you scramble to your feet and run back to your car. Finally, you're safe. You survived. Uh, not so fast. There's one more type of bear to worry about. And it has been stalking and hunting you for prey. It's a male polar bear. Wait, what? Ah! A polar bear follows its prey using its exceptional sense of smell. So now you won't be able to hide. And you left your car key with the rest of your gear at the campsite. After a day of bear attacks, this would be the end of the line. One swipe from the bear's nine and a half centimeter claws can snap your spine. Then it would feast on you. As your life drains out of you, you'd suddenly realize something. Polar bears are supposed to roam the icy polar deserts in the Arctic Circle. That's definitely not where you went camping. As you snap out of this traumatic fantasy, you have to face reality as a pair of day hikers step out of their car and find you in your dirty pajamas. You might want to stay on the boat. This part of the ocean doesn't belong to you. It belongs to this beast, the Atlantic Goliath Grouper. And if you wander too close to these shadows, you may not come back out. So, what would happen if this giant devoured you? What part of you would the fish eat first? Could you outswim this predator? Or would you have to escape out its other end? Yeah, that end. This is what if, and here's what would happen if you were swallowed by a grouper. Reaching weights of up to 360 kilograms and lengths of almost two and a half meters, the Atlantic Goliath grouper fish stalks its prey from the depths of the Atlantic Ocean. This massive fish can take down small sharks and even an occasional human. Their lack of fear has allowed humans to get close to them and hunt them to dangerously low levels. With their numbers down by 80%, the Atlantic Goliath grouper is a critically endangered species. Plus, its slow speed makes it an easy target. So how could a fish this slow catch you? An opportunistic predator, the Goliath grouper can spend hours in dark holes waiting for the right moment to eat everything in its path. This type of grouper lures large fish and invertebrates by just opening its mouth. And if you linger for too long in one area, this predator could eat you alive. Its mouth opening is so huge that the negative pressure it exerts sucks everything in its vicinity inside the grouper's mouth. But what would this rapid change in pressure do to your body? The inside of your body builds up nitrogen gas when you swim deep underwater. When you're near the surface, 
your body can expel the gas quickly, but when you've been down deep, you need to ascend slowly and give your tissue time to let the gas out naturally. When your body undergoes a sudden shift in pressure, the excess nitrogen in your body could expand and form bubbles in your bloodstream. If the negative pressure was too intense, it could give you a stroke or even paralyze you on the spot. But could you get away from this fish? It's not that fast, right? Well, you might be able to outswim this Goliath, but you would also have to survive its tremendous sonic blast. This beast might contract the muscles around its swim bladder and release a shockwave that would stun you. So you'd need to keep moving. But if this monster came at you full speed, it would have its mouth open, sucking in the water and everything around it. And while this grouper could have up to five rows of pointed teeth, they aren't for chewing. They're for keeping you inside and moving you further into its hungry mouth. Unless you have an oxygen tank, uh, you will drown inside this cavity. Water would fill your lungs and with your air cut off, you would experience severe brain damage. But if you had some way to breathe in here, this horrific journey wouldn't end in the Goliath's mouth. From this enormous cavern, you would travel down the fish's esophagus into its stomach. And there, you might meet an even worse end. Like being stuck in a washing machine, the fish's stomach would churn and grind you while coating you with its digestive enzymes. Unfortunately, this massive muscular organ evolved to hold large prey just like you. But don't worry, you only have one stop left. Although, I don't think you're going to like it. No, God! If you think you could escape out the uh, back door of this fish, think again. The pylorus, the sphincter muscle, prevents any waste from getting through until the fish is ready. Yeah, you would have to wait until the fish expels its waste before you could think about swimming away. If your body somehow survived this attack, your mind would be disoriented and scared. You would need to control your breathing and watch the direction of your exhalation bubbles. Follow them up to the surface and remember, go slowly. After everything you've been through, the last thing you need is the bends. An encounter with an Atlantic Goliath grouper could leave you stunned, drowned, or even dead. And even if you escaped, you would be alone in the cold, dark water, and you'd be even more vulnerable. They've been terrorizing animals and humans in Asia, and now they've come to North America. This is the murder hornet, one of the deadliest insects on our planet. What would happen if a murder hornet stung you? Could you be killed by one? And what makes them so deadly? This is what if, and here's what would happen if you were attacked by murder hornets. Hornets and wasps in general are deadly. In the United States, they cause 33% of animal-related deaths in adults. But Asian giant hornets, or murder hornets as they're now known, aren't just your average insect. They're extremely fast, flying up to 40 kilometers per hour. They're the largest hornet in the world, and they destroy entire bee colonies with ease. So we know they're lethal to bees, but what if a murder hornet stung you? If a pack of murder hornets is about to sting you, you'll first hear a loud buzzing noise. What's different about these hornets compared to others is that they might be lurking underground so there's a chance they could sneak up on you and you wouldn't see them coming. If this is about to happen, run away as fast as you can. Experts say you definitely don't want to swat them. 
so you'd try your best to cover your face and to seek shelter as soon as possible, but what if you didn't manage to get away in time? Just one sting from a murder hornet could cause some severe issues. The pain of their stings has been compared to a hot nail being jammed under your skin. That's from their long stingers, which are extremely painful when touched, but the main thing you'd need to worry about is the neurotoxin they inject into your body. It's called mandarotoxin and will destroy your red blood cells once you're stung. Not only that, but the toxins are strong enough that they could also dissolve your skin. The pain from just one sting could be so severe that there's a good chance you'd collapse on the ground. You could try your best to run away, but you'd probably be in too much pain. You might instinctively try to swat them away, but that would only attract more of them towards you and make them more aggressive. And if you did manage to run and hide in water, that may help as they wouldn't sting you while you're in there, but they'd wait for you to get out and attack you again. Now these hornets are psychopaths. And if you don't manage to get away, before you know it, you'd be surrounded by hundreds of murder hornets ready to sting you. They'd all begin to attack and it would feel like hundreds of sharp hot nails being jammed in your skin. Your body would start to swell and balloon up. With each sting, it would be harder to move and in just a couple of minutes, you'd become unconscious from the pain. The mandarotoxin would then enter your bloodstream shut down your organs, and kill you. And because the murder hornets are even bigger jerks than we thought, they'd continue to sting you even after you die, until they no longer deem you a threat. But you can avoid all this. After all, the murder hornets attacked you because they thought of you as a threat. So if you can, try not to go near these things, and then you should be okay. But. What if we couldn't avoid them, because all of Earth's insects were giants? Well, we'll leave that story for another What If. Imagine you're out for a blissful swim, trying to catch a glimpse of some beautiful whales. The sun is shining, the water feels refreshing, and uh oh, something.